We're on board Mirabella, a 157-foot Trinity super yacht. Now, she's 157 foot long. She has a beam of just under 28 feet and draws about eight feet. Now, this is one of the most popular and successful models of yachts ever constructed in the United States. In this video, we're going to take a look all over here to understand why that is. And just for a change, we're going to start in the heart of the yacht, in the engine room. Actually, tomorrow we'll be filming a charter video of this same yacht, but today the video is all about the sails of the yacht. On a charter, I often say that the most important member of the crew is the chef. When you're looking at buying a yacht, though, one of the most important members of the crew is the chief engineer, and the lazarette area is a reflection of that chief engineer. And just look at it. This is a man who loves the yacht and who takes a pride in it. Sometimes, I have to be honest, we get to a yacht to film and it's so full of clutter in here, we just say, we'll skip straight to the engine room. Not here. This is like a dentist's office. We have fridge freezer over here. We have storage space here, a washer, a dryer, the cabin for the chief engineer just behind Slava. They have their own software to manage the general management of the yacht, but particularly like this. Now, this closet here is full of books like this. And actually the crew said to me, don't show those, they're too old. But they're old because they've been thumbed through over the last 20 years. These are the original line drawings and diagrams and circuit board uh, drawings of the yacht. I draw that to your attention because sometimes when we're selling a yacht of a certain age, these are no longer available. It makes the sale difficult, it makes it difficult for the next crew that come on board. Here, everything is still intact, everything's regularly used, and everything's easily available. Now from here, let's take a look at the engine room. I asked Slava, who's filming, to come in first because I didn't want to detract from the wow factor of this engine room. It's so clean, so tidy. It's an absolute tribute to the chief engineer and a crew who clearly love the yacht. Now, a couple of things to say here. These are Caterpillar engines. Each one is 2,250 horsepower. They have intercoolers at the top, so they're the B range of those engines and they'll propel the yacht to about 21 knots top speed. But you're looking at a range of the 3,000 nautical miles range at about 10 knots. It's quite hot in here, so I'll tell you the next thing I want to tell you about the engines from the aft deck. One of the reasons it's so hot in there is because we're filming in the Turks and Caicos Islands, which is absolutely beautiful and very, very hot, I have to say. Now, I wanted to start with the engine room in the Lazarette because I think that a serious yacht buyer wants to know, first of all, about the bones of the yacht, the heart of the yacht. How well has it been looked after mechanically? How well has the maintenance been done? Then after that, the cosmetics are things that can be changed and improved and, and, and worked on. But is the bones of the yacht in good condition? And when I see an engine room like that, I personally wouldn't hesitate to bring a client to take a look at this yacht as a real serious contender in the 150 to 160 foot range. Let's take a look at the cosmetics of the yacht, though, the layout itself. As you can see, a beautiful aft deck area here. And talking to the captain, I got a little bit of insight into the way that the yacht works. He was saying how this is a great area when people are doing water sports to wait until the jet ski is available or while they put their scuba diving gear on. It's also a fantastic spot and we'll see this in the video tomorrow when guests arrive for the crew to be able to greet them with cold towels and drinks before they then go either to their cabins or up onto the sun deck. It's a really good useful area on board that's been well thought out. Let's take a look now inside into some of the amazing features on the inside of the yacht.
I do like to be able to walk into a yacht and immediately feel comfortable. Now, when we're filming yachts uh, with Slava, and actually today we have Yarrick with us as well, we make a point not to sit on the owner's sofas. But I have to say, on this yacht, that was quite difficult not to do. We didn't do it, but it's very difficult when there's such a comfy looking arrangement um, as this. In a moment, I'm gonna shut up and let the pictures do the talking, because you don't really need me to point out a lot of the details here. You can just enjoy looking at them. But there are two things I did want to mention. First of all, that some of the Trinity yachts of this size have this whole area partitioned off. So this becomes one room, and then the dining area is a separate dining room. Now, that's okay, I understand why people did it, but personally, I much prefer this arrangement here, which is so much more open, so much, let so much more light and air get in. You still have this lovely, beautiful dining area. And as you can see, it has access to the televisions on both sides. That's a double-sided television there. So if people want to eat and at the same time watch the sports, they can do that. But the other thing I wanted to point out was this other partition here. I did question why that was there, because if we step through, we still have plenty of space. And the captain pointed out to me that this is a great arrangement because if the crew need to be going up and down the stairs to change linen and, and clean the rooms and such like, maybe put new toiletries in the, in the cabins, they can do that without disturbing the guests that are through there enjoying their dinner. It's a clever arrangement. From here, let's take a look at the owner's stateroom. Very short corridor, access to the bridge deck there, a day head here, but then look how beautifully pointed this is. A lovely little sofa here where you can just sit and put your feet up, read a book and enjoy that beautiful view out of the large portholes. But then look at the, look at the bathroom. Talk about a bathroom with wow factor. The shower is enormous and it has a steam facility as well so you can practically use it well you can use it as a sauna effectively look at this beautiful roll top bathtub here it can have a partition so that you've got a his and hers and you have access both from there and also from here into the bathroom the stateroom itself is absolutely magnificent so you've got a nice desk here that you can work from with that fantastic view. I've always loved this about American hotels and yachts as well. Massive mattress that must be such a comfortable bed to be able to sleep on. You've got his and hers closets and this. I know it's a small thing but it's a great thing. I just love the idea of sitting here putting my feet up and I actually would probably fall asleep here so it's best that I don't stay here for too long. Again, we'll show a few images before I move on and I'll just let you enjoy the imagery of this beautiful stateroom before we look at the guest staterooms. very simple layout down here and I'm sure that the shipyard and the designers would make no apologies for that because often the simple layouts are the best but that doesn't mean to say it's not versatile and there are not some surprises take a look in here hey see I bet you didn't expect that can you imagine how much children would enjoy sleeping in a cabin like this as you can probably guess, it's been set up like this for the purpose of the video, but actually it doesn't take long to convert it back into one double bed or into an L-shaped sofa. And then you can open this partition here and you have a double bed on the one side and this seating area over here to make a big VIP suite. I like that idea. I, I was thinking when I first saw it that if I'm in a hotel room and it has an extra seating area in it, a little lounge area, I always feel a little bit more special for that. I like the fact that I don't have to sit on the bed to read a book. I can sit on a proper sofa, uh, but still be in the privacy of my own room. That's great. And then let's take a look as well at the other two staterooms. This 
this is rather cool too because not everybody wants to always call on the crew every time they want to drink and if you're in your cabin you can simply come here where there's a well-stocked fridge you can help yourself to water or beer or whatever you prefer there's actually got two fridges here and then these two sumptuous vip state rooms so everybody has a good sized room nice big bed television closet little workstation here and something that really impressed me was the fact that this stateroom has a really large shower the other one has a tub if you're thinking of buying a yacht like this first of all you're probably going to have people on board from time to time who would rather have a tub than a shower but also if you want to put it on the charter market and it's been an incredibly successful charter yacht then that kind of thing really makes a difference between whether somebody chooses your yacht and you get the income or whether they choose another yacht that has just simply different facilities. Once again, I'll let a little bit of the images do the talking and let you enjoy some music, and then we'll take a look at the Sky Lounge. bridge deck we have a day head there's actually a day head on every deck except for below deck where of course everybody has their own bathrooms and what a gorgeous sky lounge this is it's so impressive you've got everything you could ever want in here a games table lovely seating area huge television that lowers down as well and there's kind of a work of art behind there for when the television's down something I do want to say is that when I looked at the bar the first time I found the ice maker couldn't find a fridge and then the captain said, actually, each one of these is a fridge. So you've got lots of refrigeration space. You could put a coffee maker up there, I'm sure, if you wanted to. Ice maker. You can sit there, watch the game and enjoy a drink. We've looked a lot at the inside of the yacht. Now let's take a look at some of the incredible deck spaces on board, starting with the aft deck on the bridge. And just look at this, I have to say the division of spaces on board these Trinities is pretty much perfect. I can't think of a better way that you could divide the spaces. This is obviously the area that mostly you're going to be dining at. They've even been able to fit an exercise bike in the corner. All of the decks have big television screens. If you enjoy sitting there, having a beer, watching the football, you can do that. Um, but more than anything, I'm impressed with the division of space because there's going to be days in the, particularly in the Bahamas, the Caribbean, where it's pretty hot and humid and you're happy to sit out here for a while, but then you want to be able to go into the Sky Lounge. There's going to be other days where you don't really want to be inside the yacht at all. You want to be outside. And this combination, this layout, really allows you to do everything. But the piece de la resistance, as far as the deck space is concerned, is the sun deck. And just look at the layout up here. It is absolutely perfect. You've got so much on this deck. You've got space for an 18 foot tender, a crane to be able to launch and retrieve it. I should mention actually that this yacht, like many yachts of its size, also has an intrepid chase boat. Big bar area. It's kind of a double facing bar actually. You've got an ice maker here that's so big that you can have practically a huge container full of ice to throw a fish in when you catch it. The bar also faces this direction with more bar stalls here. So I can well imagine you could have a big group of people with one of the crew in the middle serving drinks, good conversation going, lovely seating area here. And of course, the obligatory jacuzzi hot tub at the front. But one of the things I wanted to mention to you is that for the purpose of this video, we wanted to put the sun awnings up to show this option with the extra shade. But actually that sun awning can come down and it becomes a cinema screen so that the guests can, or rather the crew can rearrange the furniture here for the guests and they can watch a movie in the evening if they want to. And if they need to go to the bathroom, there's even a day head just there at the size of Slava so that they can use that day head. I mentioned earlier, there's a day head on every single uh, deck. Now, one of the things that impressed me actually about 
the yacht is that because apart from being for sale, it's also available for charter, it's a very guest orientated crew. The moment we set foot on board, they were treating us with the hospitality that they would normally treat guests, which is tremendously impressive. We have actual guests coming tomorrow who we're going to film to be able to convey the charter experience. Um, but it did make me think, how well are the crew looked after to be able to be that fresh, that vibrant, that enthusiastic? So let's take a look now at the crew areas on board, starting with the bridge. Now, at first glance, the bridge looks like any other bridge. You've got the instruments here, the helm wheel, you've got this lovely seating area, but usually a bridge would end there. Usually you would have a bulkhead here, and that would be it. And even that would be a good sized bridge. Not here, look at the size of this. All of this area here, you've got lots of storage space. You've got a full size chart table, which a lot of captains would really appreciate a decent area for communications and to be able to do chart plotting if you want to back then. And really an excellent sized, I think any captain would agree, an excellent sized, proper, dignified captain's cabin on board too. That is so important. And I know from comments that I get on the YouTube channel from viewers that you agree with me when I say that if you look after the crew and you give them dignified space and good conditions to work in, you have a happy crew, then it's a happy experience being able to use the yacht. Now this was not the only area that surprised me in size. We're going to look at another area now which was surprisingly large and then I'll give you the observation that I made as to how I think Trinity have done it. Let's go down and take a look at the galley. So I'm rather glad that Stuart was cooking here for this part of the video because it gives us a sense of perspective of the space here. I was very surprised that a 157 foot yacht with such a big owner's stateroom would also have such a large galley. Usually you have one or the other, but here we've got plenty of fridge freezer space, plenty of space to work in. And I love the fact that we have Rationale ovens here because the first time I ever heard of Rationale, we were filming a 275 million euro, 105 meter ocean coat. And when I got to the galley, I said to the builders who'd asked us to do the video, what do I need to know here? The first thing they said was Rationale ovens, because that is an absolute statement of the quality and the expectations of equipment on board. We're looking at units here that can cost upwards of $10,000 each. That's an indication of the quality of the galley equipment that's on board. And I have to say the quality of the food reflects that as well. Interesting too that you can notice that the Chef 2 has access to the CCTV cameras. And the captain again was explaining to me there's a very good reason for that. You know when you're in a high-end restaurant, how irritating it can be sometimes when the waiter's passing by every five minutes going, is your meal okay? Everything okay, sir? And you know that actually they're just looking to see when you're finished so they can send the next order through uh, to the chef. Here, they don't need to do that. They can see at all times if the level of your wine is low and a stewardess will come out and top it up if you finish the first course and then the second course will come out as if by magic. There's no magic to it. They can actually see on the CCTV there and they're watching it to make sure that the timing is all right to offer a seven star service on board. Everything's been thought out. Let's take a look now at the crew quarters. Thanks, Stuart. That was actually quite amusing. It's a shame we didn't get that on film because we said that we were going to film in the crew mess and then the crew members exited one after another after another. It was like a magic trick. Some of them were coming out of here, which really gives an indication of how big this crew mess is to accommodate so many people down here. Actually, you'll remember that in the Lazarette, there's the engineer's cabin, which can accommodate two people. We have a further three cabins here, each one with their own head two people each, so that's a crew of eight. Then we have the captain's cabin behind the bridge. And actually, if the captain's one of a couple, you could have 10 people uh, for crew on board. Mirabella runs with nine, which is absolutely ample for a great charter and a great service experience. You have plenty of storage space under all of these platforms here. And again, you know, when you're looking at a yacht and thinking of buying it, it's always good to lift the platforms and take a look. Those are absolutely clean and tidy giving you plenty of storage space for bottles of water, toilet rolls, all those things that do take up a lot of space 
can fit neatly away in there. The washer and dryer, um, two of each, are made by Miele. That's one of the highest possible brands. And as a matter of fact, the crew said that they're running pretty much non-stop when they're on charter. There are a couple of other things I want to point out to you though, but to point them out to you, I want to go to one of the most beautiful spots on the yacht. <laughs> This is such a comfortable spot on the yacht. It's such a nice place to sit and just enjoy the sea breeze and the beautiful surroundings that we're in here in the Turks and Caicos Islands. Now, at the beginning of the video, I said that an intelligent buyer will go straight to the engine room. They want to know about the maintenance schedule. They want to be able to verify that the yacht has been well looked after mechanically, that the bones of the yacht are in good order. But the other thing that an intelligent buyer will do is he'll say, hang on, Mirabella was built in 2004. We're now in 2024, and I know that every five years, there's a very expensive class survey that yachts have to do. Is that survey due? Well, the good news is, no, it's not, because it's already been done. That expense has already been put into the yacht for the next five years. That makes it a very attractive vessel to come and take a look at. That and the fact that she's so successful on charter as well. So she generates revenue. She's busy on charter, but she's also busy with the owner. The owner uses the yacht a lot. So he wants to make sure that it's always operational, always well looked after. The captain was saying they rebuilt the engines, they rebuilt the generators. They make sure that anything that could potentially stop a charter happening, anything that could potentially stop a cruise from happening with the owner, basically never happens because it's always looked after. In four years, they have never had to cancel a single owner's trip or a single charter. That is testimony to a yacht that I believe is well worth looking at if you're in the market of a yacht this size. And if you are, the contact details of the brokers will be on screen now. <laughs>